everyone and welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam and I'm Wendy and today we have got an episode for what I'd like to refer to as the lazy gardeners <laughs> out there. Oh, I don't think so. We just like things easy. That's okay, what we like. so for the love of easiness gardeners <laughs> out there and the topic for today's garden club is naturalizing flower bulbs. Now you may or may not have heard of that term before, um, but we do get a lot of questions from people because we do make the note in our catalog for every single bulb variety that we carry, whether it is considered a naturalizer or not. And yeah, that's right. What exactly is that? Well, naturalizers are bulbs that find their way in your garden naturally mm -hmm. and they come back year after year after year. And not only they just come back, they come back and multiply. Right. Not to the point where you're tired of them, mm -hmm. but they just sort of spread nicely in your garden. And they're very easy to remove if you find they're in a place where you don't want them to be because they're bulbs. Right. Well, it's good that you brought that point up because I know uh, that some people will often confuse naturalizing uh, with invasive. Yeah, now, that's true. naturalizing bulbs are not considered invasive because they're not going to take over a whole no. area of your garden. Not at they're, all. they're easy if, if you want to remove them out of a certain area, that's easy enough to do. Uh, and they don't spread like wildfire. No, it's sort of a gentle movement through your garden. Yeah, exactly. And that brings up another point too. Naturalizing refers to a bulb that makes itself comfortable in your garden, but it's also about how they spread. They, yeah. they produce themselves very naturally in your garden. Mm -hmm. Kind of fascinating fascinating because you know you may plant them in a straight row mm -hmm. but then they're going to find their way they know what they like they like to have you know either the sun or the shade or a little bit of both right. they like good drainage so if you've put them in a place where they're say uh, comfortable mm -hmm. they're going to move themselves even further into those areas where they are even more comfortable right. and they, they like the settings right an interesting term naturalizers create a natural look in mm -hmm. your garden is it as exactly as you said yeah. more of an organic look so you you may have planted them in a round circle, but after a number of seasons, it might kind of look more like a kidney bean or, exactly. you know, something along those lines. So they are really, really fun to grow. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some sort of real life examples. Oh, I've got one. And okay, well, you go first. Well, you know, there was this old house in Chilliwack and we used to go there for years with my parents and we drive by and it had been uninhabited for years. And there was a small clump of daffodils in the front yard. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, over the say 20 or 30 years I witnessed this house, never anything else built on it. Mm -hmm. You would see these spreading towards the street. They went towards the driveway and there's no one living in this house. So yeah. these plants, these little bulbs were finding their way. And because they are naturalizers, some of the traits we know about naturalizers is mm -hmm. they're low growing. Right. So they're not affected or knocked down by the rain or the wind. Mm -hmm. Another trait would be that they are sort of simple, right? They're not doubles and they're not just grand showy pieces, right? So they look really lovely on mass. Mm -hmm. And also I find sometimes the trait with the naturalizers, they're not necessarily liked by the deer mm -hmm. or the rabbits, right? So Which would be a uh, reason yeah. why they actually are able to exactly. naturalize exactly. in your garden. Those are really interesting points too, to bring up. And I know, for instance, oh, the real life example I can think mm -hmm. of is as a kid, we used to drive into Vancouver along highway number one and there was these boulevards. Some of them unfortunately have been torn up, but out towards Abbotsford and the Fraser Valley, these areas are still there. And you will see every spring, these daffodils coming up in clumps yeah. that have spread and have been there for many years. And they're no longer, I'm sure at some time, obviously somebody planted them, but they have now sort of grown into these lovely swaths of, they, of yellow yeah. color. And they're they beautiful. just keep coming back year after year on their very, very own. So that's the kind of look, if you're looking for something really quite yeah. organic and natural in your garden and as I mentioned at the very beginning if you're a lazy or a, <laughs> a gardener who loves the easiness of gardening these flower bulbs that are naturalizers are perfect for that's you. That's right. They love certain things too. Now when you purchase them there will of course be that information on the bulb packages themselves but typically they really like a very very well drained location mm -hmm. which is what they found on that boulevard obviously and yeah. in the lot that I had mentioned mm -hmm. so they love that they need that drainage so they can get the liquid away from their little roots and that way they can actually produce the babies mm -hmm. and they can actually spread right. in the garden right exactly so their maintenance is relatively easy oh, if yeah. you give them the right conditions for the most part they like a sunny or partially sunny location 
Association because, as we said, one of the traits or one of the common traits is that they're early bloomers. If you've planted them in areas where you've got deciduous trees, other words, in other words, trees that produce leaves, most of the time they haven't leafed out in early spring. So those areas are going to uh, be covered in sunshine as opposed right. to shade, maybe, in yes, the summer. That's right. So these are things that you can grow in those areas as well. Um, another interesting trait, because they are low growing and right. they die back completely, is that you can plant them in areas where maybe later on in the season you don't necessarily want flowers to be blooming. For example, along a pathway. Right, exactly. Also another spot too is right next to plants that say are not so pretty in the early spring. Yeah. I'm thinking of grasses typically, mm -hmm. because when they're the end of the winter and the beginning of the springtime, they're, they're just not looking very good. Mm -hmm. So that's where I have my crocuses clustered around them, because it takes all the focus off a messy plant yes and you know then they go back completely into the ground so you don't see them yeah. and then when that plant starts to, to grow it looks spectacular right well as we mentioned or I mentioned earlier in our catalogs we do let you know which ones are the naturalizers and we've got a few that we want to talk about today that are our personal favorites and ones that we've had experience with and yeah. I know the one you're going to start off with is I a very it. very pretty mm -hmm. variety Allium Neapolitanum now I've grown a few of the low growing alliums in my garden and I am so taken with them mm -hmm. because they actually bloom a little bit later in the spring and almost in early summer mm -hmm. and that's quite an unusual trait because mm -hmm. most of the traits is early bloomers exactly but this is one of the ones you'll find in the garden just a little bit later they've been around since 1823 mm -hmm. I mean that's crazy I had no idea and they're called the Naples Allium yeah. also what's wonderful about them too is that they're fragrant so in the summertime, what I or in the early spring, mm -hmm. in the late summer, I take these uh, what's <laughs> left in growing of these beautiful little flowers and put them in little vases. Mm -hmm. And even when they're dried up, they look fabulous. Yeah, so yeah. I, I kind of like that. And they have a little bit of a fragrance too, mm -hmm. which is really nice. So yeah. A whole bunch of reasons for planting the Allium Neapolitanum. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the ones I'm going to talk about is a Narcissi or a Daffodil. It's called February Gold. And oh. uh, it belongs to the Cyclamineous. That's a tough word, yeah, isn't it? Cyclamineous <laughs> sort of Daffodil, which basically means it has a very large trumpet and the petals tend to be slightly reflexed. It is such a pretty little I Daffodil. I love it. It looks like it's flying. Yeah, and with and that long trumpet. With that long, big trumpet. It's really, really, really pretty. It's lovely to grow. One thing we haven't mentioned is that you can, of course, grow these naturalizers in containers too. They're, they're going to oh, do the good. same thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to spread a little bit. Of course, being that they're in an enclosed space, you know, that's going to stop after a while. So you're going to want to, you know, take them out, take them out and, and spread them around. Right. So it, to yeah. keep that in mind, if you're a if you're a container gardener or if you have a small space, you can still grow these and they'll do just wonderful for you. And February Gold is one of those varieties that grows well in containers oh, yeah. or in the garden. It's a lovely little early blooming daffodil. Little pot of gold. Little pot of gold. Absolutely. Exactly. And I love the blue pearl snow crocus. In my garden, I'm telling you, this thing is like a, it comes back every year. Mm -hmm. And you know, I started with maybe four or five, now I've got 25 in a little area, and they will find their way along the pathway too, but they're gone by the time I'm ready to walk that pathway. Mm -hmm. They're lovely, they've been around since 1950, mm -hmm. but if you have them in your garden, they're almost see-through, that light blue color is, is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about them. And of all the crocuses, it's the one that comes back in the garden or naturalizes more easily yes. than the others. So mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with a, a lovely blue snow crocus, Absolutely. as far as I'm concerned. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the absolute favorites of most gardeners, oh, yeah. ourselves <laughs> included, are the single snowdrops. And they, of course, belong to the naturalizing category. They are so easy to grow and so wonderful to have, oh, especially yeah. in the early, early spring. We they can make almost you feel good late winter they make you feel good yeah. as soon as you see your snowdrops coming up in the garden you think oh thank goodness <laughs> spring <laughs> is on its way <laughs> and an interesting little fact about snowdrops is the reason that you know that they can actually come up sometimes even through the snow if the weather is warm enough during the day is because they've got a type of antifreeze in their stem mm -hmm. that allows them uh, not to die if they're coming up through a very very cold uh, ground surface or even through snow that's crazy mother nature is amazing yeah absolutely, absolutely. amazing 
amazing. And one of the real life examples as well that I was thinking of when we were talking earlier uh, about naturalizing bulbs is to do with snowdrops. On the way to work every morning, we drive past this one area in Langley and they have on their driveway, at the end of their driveway, a clump of snowdrops that has been over the years progressively getting larger and larger. And it Not, spills. Yeah, it just spills yeah. because it's on a bit of a hill and it's kind of coming down. And every spring I look forward to seeing that beautiful display of snowdrops. Yeah. And I swear the person who lives at this house is not doing a thing. <laughs> They're just letting it do its thing yeah. at the end Naturalize. of their driveway. Naturalize. Naturalize mm -hmm. at the end of their driveway and it looks just beautiful. Yeah. So I'm very you, envious of that clump. Yeah. I, I really am. It's, yeah. it's just in the perfect spot and it, it just looks bigger and better every year. Exactly. Yeah. It's just wonderful. So do try snowdrops if you haven't because they're just a wonderful way to welcome in the spring. Mm -hmm. And I love muscari or muscari mm -hmm. or many acum blue. Long word but gee it's pretty. And talk about a workhorse mm -hmm. in the garden. Yeah. You know, I planted mine 28 years ago and I still enjoy them. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I'll tell people out there is that if you are finding that you're sort of having a decrease in the flower sort of putting out, mm -hmm. then what you want to do is divide them a little bit. It's yeah. not that the flower or the, the bulb is getting tired. Mm -hmm. It's just it's producing babies and they're getting crowded underground. Mm -hmm. So if you can lift them up, take some of those babies out and put them back in the ground, you'll find you'll get your flower in a uh, floriferous thing mm -hmm. going back right again the next season. Yeah. And I like to take them out every once in a while. Probably every three years I find is a really good idea to mm -hmm. kind of clean them up a wee bit. Mm -hmm. And I'll start myself another little river of muscari someplace else in my garden. So they are, they really are a true workhorse, but they're so sweet. They're mm -hmm. like little clusters of yep. blue grapes in the garden. Yeah, and they smell wonderful too. They do. They'd be yeah. very pretty next to the uh, February gold, I think, yeah. actually. That yeah. blue-yellow contrast. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be nice. great. Well, if we haven't whetted your interest <laughs> yet, you certainly can check online at botanist.com or in our regular fall catalogs and choose some naturalizers for yourself. But we're going to give one lucky viewer the opportunity to do that without even having to spend a penny. All you have to do is answer our weekly question. Yes, and that question is, just name one of the traits that we have mentioned in our talk today uh, that is common to most of the naturalizing bulbs we've mentioned mm -hmm. and most of the naturalizing bulbs out there. Right. So one trait and send that answer to Garden Club at Botanist.com and what are we going to give them? Pam? Well, <laughs> one lucky Botanist Garden Club viewer is going to get a nice little package forthwith filled with a number Ooh. of beautiful naturalizing bulbs that they can plant in their garden this fall and get to enjoy them and be lazy about it <laughs> can next <I> spring. <laughs> no, you work for Titanus, so okay. you can't enter the contest. Yes. So please do send in your answers as soon as you can, and we will be doing that draw tomorrow. Perfect. In the meantime, be thinking about your fall garden. Uh, hopefully you've already started to plant your bulbs if you haven't already done so. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week in the Botanus Garden Club. We sure do. Thank you so much, Pam. It's been a lot of fun. You too, Wendy. Take See care. See you next week. Bye. Bye.